I wanted to introduce you to a new tool inside of Illustrator CC called the Shaper tool. So let me open up a new file here. The Shaper tool is pretty amazing because it allows you to actually capture gestures and it converts them into shapes. If you look over here on the left, you will see the Shaper tool. Now we're used to working with the typical you know, rectangle, ellipse, all these kinds of tools and just go out and click and drag to create them. Well, the Shaper tool does something similar. If I click on the Shaper tool, you're gonna to probably see something like an introduction here. You can close that. It's gonna just tell you how to work with it basically. And if we come out to our document, we're gonna go out and draw using, let's say a touchpad or maybe an input device like a mouse, something like that. And just click and drag to create, let's say like a circle. What it does, is it takes your gesture and turns it into a shape. We can create tons of different types of shapes. So I can create, let's say like a square, I can create a rectangle. I can go out and create a, I don't know, a triangle, that type of thing. And the shapes that we have out here, if we realize that we don't want any of these, you can actually scribble across to get rid of them. So I can scribble and it'll get rid of them. Scribble, you don't even have to touch the whole thing, just scribble across part of it. Now you do need to be careful because you're gonna see that these start to interact with each other if you overlap them. I'm gonna undo that, so undo delete. And you can also with this tool, edit shapes you already have. Since most of the shapes we're gonna create are gonna be live shapes, with the shaper tool selected, you can click on a shape and drag it, for instance, to move it. If I happen to create, let's say, I don't know, a triangle like this, I can go in and change the number of sides, for instance, to make it a polygon, or even round the corners, or just do tons of things, change the overall size of it if I want to, etc. Now I'm gonna delete that one, so I'll press backspace or delete. Now if we decide that we want to go out and for instance we want to change, I don't know, the shape of the circle here, you can see we've got lots of different ways to do that. I can also add shapes to this. So I'm going to go out and draw a circle, another circle for instance, and I'll click on it and I'll change the overall size. You'll see that this one in here just changes the size. I'm going to take that and I want to add it to it. So we come over here, you're going to notice that there's a lot of smart guides that help us align things. So these center points are now lined up. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to combine all this. So with the shaper tool, this is the best part, you can scribble across borders or boundaries to get this done. So I'm gonna click over here to deselect. I can come in here now and if I scribble across this border, it's actually gonna combine the shapes. Now what's great about this is that they're still live and they're still editable. It's sort of like working with shape modes using the option key or alt key. If you click on this shape here then it's, that's been uh, created, you'll see that this is called a shaper group. If you look upper left over here in the control panel, you'll see shaper group. Now what I can do, let me move this over a little bit here, is I can click one more time and go in and do a shaper group select. So that selects it and you're gonna see like a cross hatch in here. That means that I can go out and for instance, apply a color if I want to. And right now the library is not working, so I can apply some kind of color, like maybe a red. If I click to deselect, you'll see that it just applied it to all of them, all the merged shapes. Now I'm gonna click one more time. You'll see we have this little arrow right here. This means that we can get in and edit each individual shape. Now you can also do this. If I click on this arrow, I can then get in and you'll see the arrow switches here. I can get in and start to edit each shape independently. I can also, if I click to deselect, come up to this group of shapes, double click, and I'm immediately in, and I can start clicking on the individual shapes here and start to edit them. So that means that I could go into this circle, for instance, say, hey, let's make that a little bit bigger. That looks pretty cool. I can drag it, move it, do what I want. It'll even allow me to do things like recenter. I can click on each one of these shapes and try and make some kind of edit, for instance. So I'll say, let's make that one a little bit bigger. I've got the, the pie shape here going on, so I can increase this a little bit more, do something like that. I can do these numerically if I want to as well. Once I'm done with the shape, I can also add other shapes if I want to. Let's suppose I want to take a little divot out of the eye here I'm creating. I could go and actually draw another shape, for instance, like this circle, add it here, and if I want to, I can go and remove it. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scribble through. So I'm going to scribble through up to that point. And you'll see it just removed it from that eye shape, but the circle is still there. If I double click on the whole thing here, I can jump right in, and if I select, let's say, this circle, I can start to edit. So this is completely editable. We can do all different kinds of things here if we want to. Once we're done, I can double click here and we've got it out there. Now, if I decide I wanna, let's say, be finished, we can expand this if we want to, to join it all together. 
But as you can see, working with the Shaper tool is actually pretty easy. And it's something that I've started to implement or started to add to my workflow a little bit just because it seems to make a little more sense in some cases. This can actually take the place of, let's say, working with some of the other tools that we have as well, being able to combine, being able to punch, and work with shapes. You'll notice that I put this circle right here. If I go out and let's say I create using just a regular rectangle, for instance, and I add a fill to that and send it to the back, you'll see it's actually punching. It's using like a compound shape here. So with the shaper tool, we've got a lot of features and a lot of things that we can use it for. One of the things that I think that it's best for is to use some kind of touch device, maybe working with a uh, Wacom touch tablet or perhaps a Surface Pro or something like that. But we can also do it using the typical inputs that we use today, like a mouse.